So once you've finished snow foaming and you've rinsed it all down, the car is pretty much clean. You're actually ready for your proper wash. Now I use a two bucket method. The principle is, is you have clean water and then you're rinsing off in your secondary bucket. So all the dirt and grime goes in the secondary bucket. You're not picking it back up from this bucket and then putting it back on the car. You'd be quite surprised when you use one bucket, how dirty the water is. And when you're coming towards the end of the clean, you're putting that dirty water back on the car. So grab yourself two buckets. I do use a grit guard. Uh, I don't use the standard ones that you find for a fiver. I never saw the point of it. So just taking a closer look at the grit guard itself and the principles and how it works. I always thought grit guards were a bit of a gimmick, to be honest. You have this sort of clear grid with these flaps at the bottom. It goes on the principle that the dirt goes below the grit guard. It gets locked under these flaps at the bottom. And then as you're putting your mitt in to rinse it all, the dirt gets trapped underneath. But, you know, I'm an engineer. What goes round also goes up so yeah i'm sure it does work but not as effective so i've always been on the lookout for a better grit guard and i found this one this is the dirt lock one now this uses basically a, a vortex system so it goes under the principle that majority of the bottom of the bucket is blocked so you're also not only you stopping what's going round you're also stopping what's going up and down or 90 percent of it i mean you're not going to stop everything but it's a damn sight better than having nothing at all so you have these very thin sort of nozzles so the the dirty water goes through the front but is highly restricted coming back. And I think that is actually a really, really, really good design. Now, if you've got any better products, feel free to leave some comments. And if you, if you don't agree with me or if you've got anything else to recommend, gladly try it. But I think that is actually probably the, other than just having little pinholes. Because the thing is, is you don't want to go too thin because dirt won't be able to go through it so I think that is actually a really good design so you want to put that in your rinse bucket so you have that little grip guards for your fingers so you can pull it out because you've got these little flaps on the side which really do lock it in and that goes and pushes right to the bottom so when it comes to soap we're going to be using the Meguiar's wash you want to put in 50 mil. Now, to be honest, I don't understand this. Why on earth, when they manufacture these buckets, which are really, really strong buckets, why don't they just put a little thing at the bottom of the bucket? Just a little thing. It's a little bridge of plastic so that you can fill it with soap and then you know consistently you're always using the same amount of soap so create a little well at the bottom just so you can put in 50 milliliters of soap and then you can fill your bucket so Maguire's if you're watching why not anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to fill fill these buckets up with warm water So now we've got the soapy water in one, we've got this clean water with the guard in the secondary bucket. Now what we're going to use here for washing, uh, I don't use a mitt, I use a glove. And that really allows me to get into the nooks and crannies of this gorgeous machine. By using the gloves, you've got the grit side. For getting rid of any stubborn bugs and things like that on one hand you've also got the fluffy side on the other hand so that gives you both cleaning power 
So what we're going to do is put your hands in and we'll wash down. Now what you want to do is you want to wash the car in a side to side motion. Don't, whatever you do, don't go round and round and round. It's a common mistake. And that's also AIDS. Remember if you have got anything that's left over on the paint, by doing that round and round is going to add swells to it. So you want to always wash side to side like that and always work top down. The top part is the cleanest so that once you get to the bottom like that, that where the majority of the grime is now sitting, then you put it in your secondary bucket. Then go back again and just go over it again. And what you want to do is you want to be washing one panel at a time. Don't be going all over the shop. You want to be focusing. Now you want to move on to the next panel. So that dirt is now heading on its way to the grit guard and hopefully not much of it will come back up again. But we'll have a look once we've finished. The next thing we're going to talk about is cleaning badges. Now I can't show you the back because this bad boy has been debadged. So the only really difficult parts I have is the front. Now your best bet, get an old electric toothbrush because it agitates and it's actually relatively easy just to get in. Plus it's got plastic head on it so there's no chances of damaging. Now I tend to use cleaning product neat so I literally dip it like so. As you can see that all the dirt's getting in but it's, it's very difficult with a, a wash mitt to really get into his little nooks and crannies but uh, I'll bring the camera in in a second, but you'll see where I've purposely left it to prove a point um, is right in these corners here. You can see the, the paint actually starts getting sort of a hazy white, you know, where you can't, you can't actually get in. So by using the toothbrush actually lets you get right into those bits there. The other parts that are good is in the uh, door cards where the S-line emblems are because you've got ridges there and you tend to have a bit of hazing between the paint and the raised ridge. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that in a second but I'll just bring the camera in now and we'll have a look at what, what I mean. But if you look here, you see how it's hazy inside and it's hazy there. So by using the toothbrush now obviously you would just rinse this off with a jet wash um, but I'm just showing you how the, the dirt has gone once you get the jet wash in there uh, and then give it a dry but you'll see there the dirt has completely gone So once you finish the wash before the jet wash, people don't always tend to forget about inside of the boot. So just pop your boot and then give that section here 
because I must admit I'm guilty of it myself is you wash the whole car and then you pop the boot and you think oh I forgot it so just remember to do that bit as well because at the end of the day it's still exposed paintwork and just give that a good wipe down and then use your microfiber towel is because you don't want to be jet washing inside of the boot because you will spray inside so always best just to dry it out so the last part is just around the fuel cap give that a good clean there's a good little notch inside there that you can really get into it's mainly just this bit you tend to get a bit of dirt and grime up on this edge now you can just use a bit of water here just to sort of rinse it down and while you're here here's a good tip is get yourself an earbud remove the end discard in an eco fashion way and stick it down there because what I've also found is these nozzles here which is the drain hose that comes underneath the wheel arch these tend to get blocked and that just makes sure that that's clean and can drain away because what you don't want is that drain to get jammed up and for the last part just pop the bonnet if you've got these ridges here give these a wipe down like so and also the headlight trims now I've got a whole engine detailing episode coming up if you look in the descriptions you'll see that one and that's actually covering and cleaning the whole sort of engine properly um, so but just mainly just give these plastic bits here and just this bit here uh, just a little wipe down work your way along the front and do that you can see that it's quite dirty and then just use the microfiber towel and there we have it so just to compare cleaned uncleaned now once you've washed the full car the next the last thing to do for the washing is to wash the wheels whatever you do don't wash the wheels as part of the car because these are the most dirtiest I even go to the point of having a different set of gloves which are actually a completely different color for this very purpose these are known as my wheel gloves same technique as before so we'll put the more coarser side on one hand and we'll put the fluffy side on the other and what we want to be doing really now as lovely as these wheels are on this amazingly refined wonderful machine they are a nightmare to clean and having the gloves really lets you get in and
section of this video, we're going to be getting on his hands and knees behind the beast himself and cleaning the chrome exhaust tips. Now you can just give it a quick rub over with a cloth, but for that ultra deep, shiny, clean, we need to remove the exhaust tips. Now, so you need to generally unbolt them, ouch, and actually remove it from the car. Now, these tend to get covered in tar spots, which is very, very difficult to remove. Now, I've seen it on the forums loads of times, people saying, how do you get rid of the tar? You know, what products actually break down the tar? Now, you, I've seen some good things about Turtle Wax um, tar remover, but do you know what actually does work? Brasso. It really is a cheap and cheerful product. You get the wadding, one it's a bit easier to apply, ends up messing around with your microfiber towels. So get a little wad of that and literally just run over. Now you see we've got some tar spots there. Work your way around. You can actually feel. You can hear, hear the microphone. Look. Probably not. You can actually feel it all over. So literally, just give it a clean. If you can't take the exhaust tips off, then just do it on the car itself, just on the bits that you can see, just like that. But for best results, actually take it off. Um, just run it around the edges. So, like so. And then once you're done, get your microfiber towel. Give it a good polish. And there you go. And you can even see the Audi logo look. Ooh. So once that's done, pop it back on. Tighten up any bolts that you've loosened. And there we have two very large shiny bags.